Our next speaker is Hilary Eggers. Hilary is a teacher, photographer, and filmmaker. After, and this is not at the beginning. Hold on. <laughs> That's what we get for practicing too much, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's an improv game. No, this is it. Yeah. Oh, nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, right. Right. It's one of those backwards computers. Okay. This is it. Nope. Is it? Yes. This is the second. I, I can take it from here. Okay. You're welcome to come and do this while I introduce you as well. Okay. So, Hilary Higgers is a teacher, photographer, and filmmaker. After working for the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago and National Audubon in New York, Hilary came to Scripps. She's a master of using storytelling as a way to communicate science. Um, I agree with all of that. That's all true. Hillary has been such a valuable resource to this cohort, um, especially when it comes to visual communications. You will see her name in a lot of uh, credits in these presentations. Uh, we spend a week in the summer making films, and Hillary was just a really, really valuable resource to her fellow classmates in, in sort of thinking through how to tell a story, how to use the equipment, how to create films in Adobe Premiere, and everything in between. So we're really, really lucky to have her as a part of this cohort. And I also want to say a special thank you to Hillary's grandmother for being here. Um, I remember when Hillary, at some point in the year, I think it was maybe the spring, left to go. Um, she kept saying she left to go dance with her grandmother. I think it was maybe for her birthday. And I know that it's really, really um, important and special to Hillary that you made it out here for this presentation. So thank you so much for being here. and. Let's please welcome Hillary Eggers. All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Hillary, and I'd like to start off by thanking the UCSD and Scripps staff, as well as my capstone committee. This program or this project wouldn't be nearly as strong as it is without your help and support. I'd also like to thank my family who are here today. They have supported me through a lot of different choices in my life, from choosing to attend scripts to wearing hot pink overalls. <laughs> and by looking at photos of my family through the years, you can really see how far we've grown. And it's easy to make educational observations and guesses just by comparing two photos side by side. Now, at this point, some of you are probably thinking that my family peaked in the 90s. <laughs> And others of you are wondering where the science is in all of this. But that's exactly why I'm here today. I am a teacher, photographer, filmmaker, and a scientist. And I don't believe that our projects have to be just right-brained or left-brained. But by working together, we can create, um, by working together, we can create science and visual media that can complement and strengthen each other. My capstone project is to show you an example of scientific storytelling. I've been working with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to create two deliverables, a short educational video and documentary photos that can, that of their long-term research project, CalCoffee. CalCoffee stands for the California Cooperative Oceanic Fisheries Investigations. And the program has been collecting scientific data off the coast of California for the past 70 years. However, anybody that I talked to that wasn't affiliated with one of the three program or one of the three departments that run Cal Coffee, which are Scripps, NOAA, and the Department of Fish and Wildlife, had no idea what Cal Coffee was. My favorite reaction when I asked someone about what Cal Coffee was, girl, it's Cali Coffee. We put coconut milk in our coffee here. <laughs> Almost, but Cali, Cal Coffee and Cali Coffee are two different things. So my goal was to help the general public visually understand the Cal Coffee program. And I did this by collaborating with NOAA scientists and media team to identify the missing content. And then I volunteered as a scientist aboard a Cal Coffee research vessel to create two deliverables that I mentioned before, the video and the photographs. 
Let's start out with the photographs to give you an idea of Calacothi's historical context. Documentary photos are one of my favorite things because they capture moments in time, and people can understand experiences just by looking at them. Powerful photos have even inspired action and influence. Cameras have also gotten to the point that they can help contribute to science because they've been around long enough. Now, remember the photos of my family? We're gonna use these as an example. So take this photo, taken on May 30th, 1868. We can notice that the trees are bare. You see the people dressed in black. They're all wearing pants, long short, or long pants, long coats, winter clothes. Now, if we compare this photo to a photo taken on May 30th, 2005, which is 137 years later, we can see quite a difference. There are leaves on the trees. The trees even look to be different species. And the grass is green. And although there are no people around, we can assume that it looks like a normal spring day. But that's the problem when we use words like normal. What's normal to me may not be normal to you. And normal probably won't mean the same thing in 150 years. But as scientists, we know that recording data and observations, we can help recognize shifting baselines. And photographs can help with that too. Take this, or take this study done by Scripps' very own PhD graduate, Dr. Lauren McCallaghan. She analyzed 51 years of photographs taken of trophy reef fish in Key West, Florida. And from these photos, she was able to identify the length and weight of these fish, how the fish changed over time. Just as Kalkafi data, these, helps, these photographs help us understand what ecosystems looked like generations ago. Each year, Cal Coffee scientists work to make sure their data collection techniques remain consistent through time. Here's a photo of a woman deploying a bongo net tow. Notice the large protractor near her head? The protractor is used to measure the angle of the net's tow cable so the angle can remain consistent year to year. And here's a photo of the bongo net being deployed this year. And a scientist measuring the angle. Same tool, same angle, but it differs over time. And this is a CTD. The CTD device measures conductivity, temperature, and density. And it collects water samples with specific depths. Look how it's changed throughout the years. And here's a CTD in 2018 on the deck of the ship. Now, all of the scientific data taken by Cal Coffee program collects um, or all of the scientific data taken by the Cal Coffee program is available online as a resource, free of charge. And so by tagging these photos with the correct metadata, which would be the ship name, the year, the scientist, or the scientific tool, we can link the data with the photos and understand the program better. So I photographed the uh, winter cruise in February. And since then, I've been working with the UCSD digital librarians and metadata analysts to make sure that these photos, along with the previous and future Cal Coffee photos, have a location where they can be easily searched for and shared with the general public. By giving these photos a digital home, it makes them possible to be used for science and also as education in the future. Now that we've talked about the photos, let's move on to the video. Before coming to Scripps, I was a teacher. And one thing that I've learned to be true across all different age groups and content areas is that people learn best from stories. A good story is easy to follow and relatable. And when a good educational story is condensed into a two to five minute film, it's also shareable and able to hold the attention of online audiences. Noah's YouTube channel is, has nearly 14,000 subscribers, which is a great start. And then we look at YouTube pages like NASA or ASAP Science that have 2 million or 7 million. And we can see that there's an online audience that wants to learn visually about scientific information. CalCoffee data is also applied to seafood and fishery management. And that industry creates another audience in itself. I believe that online media is a powerful way to grow scientific interest. Scientific videos need to be simple yet intriguing enough for a general audience. The good news is that simplifying information does not mean dumbing it down. One way to simplify information is to make a good online video that tells a story. As people, we're surrounded by stories, whether it's passing down family traditions, describing your day, or even a recent discovery. The good news is that we all have experience telling and listening to stories. 
And as scientists, the strength of our stories comes from characters. And more good news, as scientists, we have great characters. <laughs> For my helicopter, before I go into the video, I want to tell you more about my time. Right. For, sorry. For my video about Cal Coffee, I chose to start with a character, Pacific Sardines. Now, sardines aren't the most attractive animal, but they do play a role in Cal Coffee's history even, and your day-to-day -day lives, even though you may not know it yet. And so before I play the video, I want to tell you a little bit more about my time aboard the Cal Coffee research cruise. In order to truly understand and document the program, I was given the opportunity to volunteer as a scientist and work directly with the people that make this program happen. And let me tell you, it is a team effort. The ship runs 24 seven, so scientists and crew divide into two 12 hour teams. I was assigned to the night shift, which gave me time to shoot photos and videos during the day. Night, aboard the boat, or night on board the boat was peaceful, and the moments leading up to the sunrise were my favorite times. This immersive experience was extremely important to my Cal Coffee project because it opened the communication lines between me as a filmmaker and the scientist. I was given time and space to learn about the program and ask questions directly to the experts. Spending two to three weeks out at sea together, four times a year, the scientists and crew refer to themselves as the Cal Coffee family because they spend so much time together and help each other out as needed. This video has been a successful collaboration between Cal Coffee scientists, NOAA media team, and me as a filmmaker. Communication and collaboration between all of these people involved is necessary in creating good scientific visuals, and definitely worth it. For example, there's a day near the beginning of the trip where a pod of dolphins appeared next to the ship. Unfortunately, I had already gone to bed for the day, but before I did, I shared a list of photographs I needed with the crew and on that list were marine mammals. The crew called my name over the loudspeaker of the ship, and I was able to get up and out of bed in time to see the pod. Now, was getting out of bed worth it for this photograph? Debatable. <laughs> but the feeling of being part of the Cal Coffee team and working together definitely was. To fit into the guidelines of an online audience, my video shares information about the Cal Coffee program in under four minutes. You all are the first ones to see it in this complete version, and it will be officially released to educate online audiences, school groups, and donors this fall. Ready to see the video? Okay. You may not realize it, but sardines play a role in our everyday lives. Yes, those small fish that live in the ocean, they can be added to our food as toppings on pizza, or they can be added to chicken feed. Chickens eat them, and then we eat the chickens. Even vegetarians use sardines. They're added to fertilizers that are added to the soil to grow vegetables, which is why it's a problem when they disappear. In the late 1940s, the once booming sardine fishery dramatically collapsed. Sardine nets that were once full of fish were coming up empty. What happened to the sardines? In an effort to understand this question, scientists, government, and fishermen worked together to place a tax on the fishery. Enough money was raised to start an investigation. What is now known as Cal Coffee was formed. Cal Coffee is a research program. It samples the water and animal life of specific locations to investigate the marine environment off the coast of California. These data aid in the management of our living resources by allowing us to determine how the environment affects sea creatures. Since the 1940s, Cal Coffee has evolved to also include the new goal of understanding long-term changes in the California marine ecosystem as a whole. We collect samples when the fish are small, just eggs and larvae, because they can be found near the surface of the ocean and they are easier to catch and count. NOAA Fisheries uses the data from these scientific samples to recommend fishing quotas for the target species and to perform stock assessments on local marine mammals and birds. You get a big picture of what's really going on in the ocean. 
after we remove all the fish eggs and larvae, they go to Scripps, which houses our samples we've taken since 1949. So many researchers from all over the world can go back in time to study what they need to study. Cow coffee is an important resource that through the years has been used to make many scientific discoveries. With these data, what we've done is we've looked at the past, we can see what's going on at the moment, and then based off that, we can then tell what might happen in the future. Four times a year, research cruises visit the same areas that were studied when the program first began in 1949, making Cal Coffee the longest running continuous time series study of underwater and biological data in the world. Seven decades of a comprehensive data set is by far an invaluable resource. Hundreds of new discoveries have come from Cal Coffee data. From supporting healthy fisheries to understanding climate change. As for the sardines, Kalkafi data has taught us that their population size naturally cycles through high and low phases. Kalkafi began as a result of a low population phase. And although we're in another low phase right now, based on Kalkafi and other studies, we can be confident that the sardine population will increase again in the future. We're learning more about their natural fluctuations and fishing pressures thanks to Cal Coffee. Thank you so much. So it's time that we expand from being just scientists to also being storytellers and communicators. Visual imagery is a powerful tool that can be used to educate and contribute to these stories. I'll be continuing this work after graduation by starting my own scientific communication consulting business. Thank you. Thank you, Hilly. Great presentation. Thank you. I, um, I was curious because, you know, telling the story in the visual media, you know, you have these now the remote subs that look really cool and the copters and all that. How does that play a role, do you think, in the future of visual storytelling in the context of marine uh, science? Yeah, I think it'll play a great role, especially because we all see a drone footage and just love it. Like a lot of the great videos start off with drone footage and some of the other presentations you'll see today use that footage as scientific resources. And so I think it can continue to work hand in hand and people are going places that we haven't gone before and so can cameras. Thank you. Hillary, you said that on the cruise, you were a scientist at night and you filmed during the day. <laughs> when did you sleep? <laughs> yeah, that was, it was hard, but it was also like, I was living my dream and just so jazzed to be alive that I slept a lot when I got home. <laughs> and I mean, in the future, I hope that there's enough funding. And I think as science media becomes more and more influential, there'll be room on the boat for both photographers and videographers and scientists. But at point, there's just room for scientists. And so I was really happy to get to do both. Wonderful video, Hillary. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I may be a little prejudiced. <laughs> uh, two, two, one a comment and then a question. And the first, the first comment is that it is so refreshing for uh, someone of my generation uh, to, to really uh, see what all of you are doing as scientists, to really look at uh, science-based data and make science decisions and, uh, and lead the way on, on these subjects. It's just uh, it really, it's a wonderful feeling uh, on here. So congratulations on that. And my, my question is to you, Hillary, <laughs> is, uh, you know, that's a great, great video. And how so much, it's so important to leverage something like that with other associations to get the word out. Uh, you know, of course, YouTube and things of this sort, but I'm wondering how, how you see you might be able to leverage with other organizations to, uh, to spread that video. 
Yeah, I mean, other organizations are definitely getting on board. It helps that Cal Coffee has three different programs that are running it, so I hope that all of them feel free to use this as a resource. But in the future, I think scientists are also working filmmakers and photographers into their grants because they see it as a way to spread the information. Hi, that was a really great presentation, and I'm biased too. Um, from the from the NOAA side, um, this is something that we have wanted for a long time: is to have people tell the stories about the science behind their seafood, and that is a really hidden aspect. And because of the way the agency is set up, we don't have a team of filmmakers and things that are able to do this um, locally and to be able to delve in and get to know the process. And there were, um, I think, a lot of themes. One is, you know, telling the theme of Cal Coffee and what the science does, but there were a number of other themes and you kind of touched on them. Um, one is the faces of scientists and the people. You know, a lot of people don't know what a scientist, they've never met a scientist, they don't know what scientists look like. They don't know how scientists sleep or where they sleep or when they sleep. <laughs> and they don't know about things like teamwork. You know, they kind of picture, you know, somebody in a white coat alone in a lab. <laughs> and I'm wondering um, on that aspect of telling about the people, uh, what you learned and how you see going forward, um, with that in your new consulting firm, which yeah. I hope actually uh, we're able to tap into to make some other films of our other long-term surveys, by the way. Yeah. Well, thank you for that shout out, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people are the most important, especially because this is where all the stories come from. And like sardines are great and they're a good topic to teach you about cow coffee, but the people that run it are what actually make you care. And so I think meeting the people was transformational for my film and for understanding it, and I think it will be again in the future. Um, I was wondering if you could share a little insight about, besides going on the cruise, the equipment you used, the process you used in order to create your video. Yeah, I'd love to. So I shot everything on a Canon 5D Mark III, which is a DSLR, and at first I started off with a monopod, but you know, the boat moves, and I found that I moved way more than the boat did. And so I used a tripod for most of it. So most of the scenes from the boat were shot with a tripod, and so I, the boat's not the biggest, but I was wandering around with it. And then I also had a shotgun mic on top of it to get the audio, and then lavaliers on the interviews. Now even though I had lavaliers on the interviews, which are little microphones that you can hook to your jacket, um, on the ship, it still picked up a lot of background noise, and so the scientists were really great, and we met again back here at NOAA once we got home to redo the interviews and make it more solid. But it was shot with minimal equipment, and it shows that even you don't have to be a big, fancy movie star carrying around gigantic cameras to make a good film. <laughs>